Uh, good morning. Now we will uh, uh, switch to lectures. Today we will discuss about trajectory planning uh, in order to have the material for next uh, exercise that is next Tuesday that will be on trajectory planning. Okay. And uh, we will uh, continue with statics uh, next uh, Wednesday. For uh, uh, the mechanical engineering students, uh, you only need uh, those three theoretical lectures. Today, trajectory planning, then uh, uh, next Wednesday, uh, statics, and uh, next uh, Thursday, actuators and sensor. However, uh, you will need to follow uh, the practice classes for uh, several other Tuesdays. And of course, I will let you know, but this is the, the course for you. Okay. Okay, trajectory planning. I, I, I'd like uh, to give you an introduction, an overview of uh, what do you mean, what do we mean when we talk about uh, two different concepts in robotics that are motion control and motion planning. So the term control and planning, they do have a different meaning. Actually, sometime in the literature, in the community, you can find also some other terminologies or a little bit of uh, confusion in this uh, aspect. But uh, I mean, let me clarify what do we, uh, I understand, uh, I consider as motion control and the difference with respect to motion planning. Motion control uh, is uh, a local or reactive control. Local or reactive means that uh, we are not going to plan, we are not going to uh, sample or to make tentative uh, to generate a trajectory with a, a certain horizon. And we will understand a little bit later. Mathematically, giving our attention of what we have done in the last lesson, we want to find Q dot at each simple time. This is for me for motion control. At each simple time, I want to find Q dot. And this should be done online in real time. I got my information and uh, within the sampling time, a window I have to produce my output so for example I need to make the set inverse of the Jacobi uh, kind of easy from the from the let me say easy means a mathematical aspect uh, is not computationally ex expensive at least in its basic formulation, then you can find a lot of uh, uh, complex approaches. Uh, or if your problem is, is complex, you have several control objectives, uh, of course, you can, may have a more complex solution. But let me say that the basic solution is easy. And we also use uh, a basic approach to handle constraints. The constraints are of two kinds, as we saw last lecture, we can have constraints uh, in the Cartesian space, in the real world. For example, this table shouldn't be touched. This is a constraint. And the constraints in the joint space. My joint has a mechanical limit. I, can, I cannot go over this angle in my, in my um, elbow. And this is another constraint in the joint space. And uh, I manage, I handle those constraints uh, with some uh, basic approaches, uh, methodologies. I can handle dynamic environment. Uh, I'm totally reactive to the environment. And in this sense, I use my sensor in order to decide what to do. It's, uh, let me say, easy, uh, or for me, it doesn't change because I not looking the future. I can also handle incremental maps. What does it mean? Well, 
since I'm, uh, I'm reactive, I'm local, I use the information that I have. If I don't know what's uh, behind the door, it doesn't matter to my algorithm because I'm going there. And then once there, I will decide what to do. This means that I'm, uh, I'm local. I use only my local information, okay? And if the map is not complete, it doesn't matter. The drawback is that I can reach uh, easily depending of course on the environment but let me say more easier than the motion planning local minimum and i will show uh, in next slide what does it, what uh, do we consider as a local minimum in what sense on the other end i have the planning of my motion so let us consider for example a humanoid robot so myself, I have to go to my office. Planning means, okay, let me try different trajectories. I can go from passing to the first floor, or I can go to the ground floor and then taking the elevator. And, do, uh, and uh, those two trajectories, they do have different costs, for example, in terms of energy, what is the best, but I can try also some other solutions because my problem now is a global problem and uh, I try, I sample in a stochastic way, several possibilities. From the mathematical aspect, now I'm not interested anymore in Q dot in that moment, but in all Q from the start to the beginning, and I can try whatever. Motion planning in its basic formulation is an offline method, is an iterative method, a trial and error method. It means that uh, most of the time I run some uh, sampling algorithms and uh, I just set a timeout. Say, so, okay, you look for solutions and after 10 seconds I stop you. And what is the best solution? I take this one usually is offline. From the mathematical problem, this could be hard. We will not go into the details, but you can easily encounter what is defined as two points boundary problems. Let us, I mean, ignore this in this uh, course, but let me say that mathematically, it could be boring, uh, or exciting depending on uh, your attitude with respect to mathematics. The constraints increases the computational time. More constraints you have uh, and more time you need to find a solution. If your environment is dynamic, well, let's see. If I have to go to my office and uh, colleagues and students are walking to the corridor, that's quite difficult for a motion planning algorithm if I want to implement all sorts of avoidance. Okay. If a map is not complete, well, my output of the motion planning will not be definite one because I, I will discover a new aspect of the map once I'm there. And, and, and so I need to take it into account in a way or in another. Motion planning, on the other hand, usually avoid local minimum because I run a, a trial and error and I stop when I find the solution. So I don't, don't get trapped in local minimum. What is a local minimum? Let's see. Let's see. What do I mean as local mean? Let me consider this uh, very simple uh, control problem and see the differences between motion control and motion plan. Okay. I want to go with the end effect or position only, not orientation, from the uh, red to the green position. This is my initial configuration. Now, a local approach so a motion control approach basically say okay let us uh, draw a segment 
from here to here. And we run an inverse kinematics on the joint, as we have done yesterday. We provide those Q dots to the motor. So we go from here to here. OK, fine. In open space, this is fine. What if uh, I have an obstacle, a U-shaped obstacle, as this one? With this approach, I basically start moving. Then I locally avoid the obstacle. So let me say I slide on the obstacle. And I get trapped here, because my local approach does not have a, a global view of the environment and try to go on the shorter distance to the green one. By, but uh, I'm avoiding the obstacle, so I simply get trapped here. This is uh, the behavior of an ingenuous or naive motion control, local approach. Okay? And you can say, okay, but that's quite easy because you can uh, see, as human, we see that we can easily avoid the obstacle by surrounding it. But this is because uh, we are thinking about possible alternative uh, trajectory. And this is what motion planning does. Sample, trial and error. Sample means, OK, try this, this, this is OK. Try, I don't know if you, could, if you know the error tree, uh, rapidly random tree uh, trajectories. But let me say try and error, sample. OK, so pick up some different position, connect them, and uh, do it until you find a solution. Nice. I will find the, the, the correct uh, trajectory and final configuration. In this case, it's also very fast, no? because I have three degrees of freedom and one obstacle. But of course, you should imagine a very complex situation. Now, problems with, uh, uh, problems with dynamic environment. If, the, if uh, this obstacle uh, is moving, even if it's slowly moving, I may need to replant. Now, what does it mean, replant? Sometimes means uh, a very uh, small difference with respect to the previous trajectory. So it's kind of an incremental replan. I'm going straight. There is uh, another person crossing the street. I can simply slow down, make the person pass, and continue. Or I can just uh, change a little bit my, my path. And that's easy. That's incremental. However, let us imagine that I'm, in, in, I'm walking. In front of me, I have uh, a crowd, a huge number of persons passing. Maybe I may decide to change totally the street. In this case, I need to think. I need to, to make a lot of uh, uh, tentative in order to, for, exam for example, here, totally change the configuration. If you look at this uh, robot, here, I draw the, the two possible uh, configuration that gives me the same uh, end effect position in the um, planar two-link robot. Because if the first is the same, this is the solution of the two-link. Uh, so the problem may be, may be uh, complex from the mathematical aspect. OK. so. What you usually find in real robot is uh, the merge of the two approaches. Usually you have uh, a planning um, phase that is running at low frequency once in a while. I decide to go in my office and I, I decide to take uh, the path that passed through the first floor. Okay, And then I don't think anymore at this solution until, for example, I found that the door is locked. And then I, I stop and I change. Or in background, I may say, OK, what I do if the door is locked? But this is in a low frequency. Then at high frequency, I avoid another colleague working without planning. I just avoid it locally. This is not replanning, but this is reactive. So those two 
usually work together. And let me just show uh, a, a video of some work that has been done by Daniele. Daniele is with us in the lab. He has been a few, a few months in, um, in Canada, uh, host of uh, the manufacturer of this robot and uh, the McGill University. Uh, okay, this, plat this uh, planning is very easy. You can see uh, that it's just a segment because the obstacle is not affecting the movement. Okay, and so this is very trivial. And then uh, static environment with obstacle, and this is also trivial enough. We are taking into account uh, all the possible constraints, uh, Cartesian, the obstacle, and uh, uh, joint space, so mechanical uh, joint limit. Uh, static environment is also quite easy. In this case, the motion planning is taking into account uh, all the constraints, so it's quite uh, AB from the computational aspect. And then here we add the virtual wall, joint limits, obstacle avoidance uh, with the control objective of position orientation and the end effect. The obstacle is dynamic and we can see that uh, the, the, the planner needs to recompute the trajectory. This is not in real time and we will appreciate better in next uh, numerical simulation. Here. This is a, a, a numerical simulation made by, made by Elisabetta that uh, worked with us uh, until a few years ago with uh, a aerial robot, aerial plus manipulator, a system of 10 degrees of freedom. Now, this is only this is a numerical simulation. I have to go from the red to the green uh, bullet and uh, this obstacle is in, in, inserted uh, into the simulation in real time by Elisabetta with the joystick. So now the, the first uh, desired path is this one. And we, we insert this obstacle. And uh, the planner simply considering its uh, average time to recompute the trajectory uh, made uh, an emerg emergency stop uh, in order to replan because planning is not in real time. Okay? When I replan, I replan starting from few centimeters ahead because I need to replan and then to decide to move away from my trajectory. This is not instantaneous. So during the replan, I, mo I, I move. In that case, since the obstacle was too close, the system decided to stop to replan the trajectory. Everything is slow, is slowed down, of course. Here, okay. Now this is a replanning. A next replan is made in real time because the obstacle is far enough to be considered during the motion. <laughs> and this is what the, the 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 robot is doing. If it is possible, it replants. If not, it stops and replan. And uh, if the obstacle is just, I mean, <laughs> in, in, uh, too close to me, I mean, we make a, a hit, of course. No, there is no way to avoid it if it's, it is crashing uh, towards me. Okay, so replan is kind of uh, uh, motion plan and motion control is kind of. But what are we going to do in this, um, in this uh, course? This is an, an overview introduction to the problem of motion control and motion planning. We are going to keep it simple, of course, because of the, uh, to avoid an excessive complexity to the, this course. And we are going to talk about those three topic first of all what is a trajectory planning for us well we will generate the input to be used as references of the motion control system 
we will understand the, the difference between path and trajectory and we will develop we'll discuss about John space trajectories but actually I will uh, uh, show you one time law to be used on Tuesday and we will be able uh, to design operational space trajectories for example you will be able uh, to uh, design uh, how to uh, how to ask the robot to make a circle in the Cartesian space okay first of all the difference between path and trajectory path is a geometric concept the runners that run the marathon they all make the same path no matter who arrives first or last because it is only the geometric concept of uh, the sequence of points that I mean it. Trajectory is the path plus the time loop. When I talk about trajectory, I'm uh, talking about the time loop. Also the time loop. Why do I need to, to give to a robot uh, a time loop? If I want to go from A to B, is it just possible to say, okay, let's go to B, and uh, this is the desired final position orientation, and put it in the control loop? Well, this is what uh, uh, we have done in the first uh, uh, course of uh, uh, automatic control because most of the time we care about uh, a step input is a regulation problem however if I provide simply a desired set point so simply this is my desired end effector position just go there okay to a mechanical system, eventually non-linear as a robot, we will make the mathematical model uh, next couple of weeks. If I just provide a set point, well, that's not very convenient from the engineering aspect. It's very nice from the mathematical aspect because the set response is full of information, but it's not convenient from the engineering aspect. Why? Well, first of all, my system is non-linear. It means that uh, my response, the output, is not easily predictable and uh, is a function of the robot dynamics. You will discover it in a couple of weeks. It's, it's a function of what uh, kind of robot I'm, I'm uh, using. It's function of my controller gains if I'm using a very simple controller like a PD, but whatever is function of the, the game. It is function of how far I want to go. It is function of uh, the, 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 the subspace of the workspace. If I'm working here, I want to go here, the response will be different. If I'm starting here, I want to go here because we will see that the mathematical model is different. Uh, this additional uh, consideration is, uh, uh, is um, maybe not easy to understand for the students unless uh, you already made um, advanced uh, control theories, uh, complementary control automatic. If you have an integral term and you provide a step point, well, you can, ha you can have uh, issues and you need what is called anti wind up. Uh, not important to go into details now, but let me say that we have uh, several issues. Then, uh, control efforts. If I want to go from A to B, 
and it'll just provide a set point. It means that my controller at the very beginning sees all the error. And since my control fault is usually proportional to the error, at the beginning, I have uh, most of the control effort, and then it goes down, down, up until up to zero. Okay, because in the beginning, I see the error is a, a step error. It means that I may easily reach actuator saturation. Actuator saturation is not nice. It is a, a nonlinearity in the control loop that uh, may have also dramatic consequences. Okay, I think you haven't studied because it's a nonlinear effect. But let me say that we want to avoid uh, saturation of the actuator. However, if I buy an industrial robot and uh, I put my industrial robot uh, here and say, okay, I can program the, the industrial robot with the graphical user interface. I just uh, put a couple of number and I provide to the industrial robot a set point for the end effect. Well, what's, what's uh, happen usually is that uh, the, 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 the controller, so the, 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 um, uh, the controller, the overall controller developed by uh, the manufacturer does not allow me to provide a set point and implements a filtered version even without uh, telling me. So it, 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 never pro it never gives uh, discontinuities to the low level motors in order to avoid that I make some mistake. What is the overall uh, conclusion of this page? Well, we cannot assign a set point to our robot. We need to provide a time loop. If I want to go from A to B, I need to tell to my robot also how to go from A to B, not only, okay, let's go to B and uh, let us pro uh, feed the controller with a set point. Set point, we can only use it in simulation, okay? Okay, so for this reason, we need to generate trajectories with the also with a regular curvature. So we, we want to have a smooth, not only in time, but also in, uh, in space. <laughs> and uh, this is what we are going to do today. We are going to learn how to provide to our system with uh, a desired trajectory smooth enough. We will reach uh, a compromise between uh, something that can be used in, in a real robot, and that is uh, easy enough to implement in one lesson next Tuesday, okay? Here we have the definition of path and trajectory that I already gave you. So path uh, uh, is logos of point in the joint or operational space. Uh, I have just to say path in the joint space and path in the operational space, but what is important is that it's a logos of point. It is a geometric concept, okay? However, trajectory, is path plus a time loop. Okay, now if I want to implement a trajectory planning, now let's see what do I need. Well, I need to know what is your path. Do I have any constraints? in my path? Do you have any constraints in my robot? For example, maximum joint velocity, maximum joint acceleration. What is my output? Well, my output is a, a temporal sequence 
of position, velocity, and acceleration. At each sampling time, this is the position, velocity, and acceleration. I may provide as output uh, the joint position, velocity, joint trajectory, or the end effect of trajectory. If I give the end effect of trajectory, it means that then I want to implement an inverse kinematics to, to compute the joint to be sent to the low level controller. Okay, however, instead of providing you a file with the a huge number of uh, position, velocity, acceleration at each sampling time is uh, better to have uh, a, a parameter representation of the trajectory, a time law, for example, let's go at a constant velocity. This is a very basic time law. Constant velocity, acceleration equal zero, it's a time law. What we are going to do is to try to, to generate a path with a motion law. The path will be characterized by A and B, extreme points, go from A to B. Then uh, I may say, go from A to B, passing through C. I may ask, I want that you may call the bands as uh, uh, arc uh, as a circle arcs for example so all the bands should be with a certain curvature this is a geometric primitive i want you to have a segment a circle arc and then another segment those are a requirement that may be or not given by the user and when i have to assign the motion law what are the parameter the total time you, you have to, to to run in this segment within two seconds the constraints in terms of maximum velocities and or but usually and maximum acceleration at the joints and this is given by engineering reasons because the motors cannot provide more than a certain tar torque actually and velocity because this is something that surprised me the first time but you also have some uh, constraints on the maximum velocities given by mechanical reasons you may also want to ask for a certain velocity in a given point there are some kind of operation in industrial robotics for example if you want to put the glue you need to do it with that velocity at the end effect you cannot be faster or slower otherwise the glue is not well posed okay so those are constraints given to the motion loop Okay, now do I develop my trajectory in the operational space or in the joint space? Well, now this is always the, 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 the dichotomy of robotics, the aspect uh, characteristic of robotics. My uh, task is in the Cartesian space. What I need to do is in the real world. However, my motors are in the joint space. And uh, the transformation from the joint to the Cartesian space is, well, in configuration is uh, via the direct kinematics, but we discover that uh, at the velocity level, this is given by the Jacobian. And the Jacobian will play a role um, even stronger later on. So, the Jacobian is, uh, let me say, the instrument to make this transformation. It is nonlinear and configuration dependent, so it's not easy. This is the reason why we need to study specific uh, approaches um, 
concerning robotics. Okay, it's not simply a control application. It's a, a, a domain on its own because it's very uh, different from any kind of nonlinear control. I have path constraints on the Cartesian space. This uh, table is a constraint and it, it's easily represented in a Cartesian space because in a Cartesian space is a rectangle. Okay. However, in Cartesian space, I don't see singularities, and this may arise, but uh, at, a, at a surprise, let me say. And uh, I may want to exploit redundancy. In the uh, traject, in the joint space, uh, I, I go in the joint space usually by kinematic inversion, and I have to take into account, as I say, that this is the space where I have my control action. So most of the time, I generate my trajectory in the Cartesian space. However, sometimes, for example, to make some uh, exercise in our in our uh, uh, class or uh, to make a movement from A in, in a certain configuration. I know that there are no obstacles. I may ask uh, to move in the uh, joint space. Okay. So let's go slowly to the some equations. You will see that are very the, the, the equations that we will meet will be easy, will be simple. Okay. It is important that you got the overall picture, but the, the, the equation and the exercise of next Tuesday will not be EV, will not be complex. Okay. I want to generate, first of all, we talk about John Space trajectories. Then we uh, make a break and we will continue with the Cartesian space. And we'll finish today the trajectory uh, plan. So my purpose is to generate uh, a function Q for all the joint, of course, which interpolates the assigned value. Now, initial and final. I want to satisfy those constraints. Should be easy to compute, like computational load means simple operations. I may want to require continuity on the variables. Now, this is quite uh, uh, I mean, this is a requirement from the, let me say, mechanical aspect from the producer of the motors and for the avoid the uh, to excite the resonance of the robot. So this is something that is very easy to understand for the uh, mechanical students. If I ex uh, excite my motor with uh, a discontinuity, I may excite resonance and basically I'm providing a signal with all the frequency because it's a step input. And this can excite also the flexibility or the elasticity in the transmission. So we will see uh, transmissions uh, in, in something about motors later on. I want continuity. Actually, uh, now 20 years ago, <laughs> I, I, I had the opportunity to work uh, in a, a consultant for Comau robots with a group of... Uh, I, I, I made my PhD in Napoli and Professor Chiaverini also comes academically from uh, Napoli. He just moved here. And we made, uh, together with the group of Napoli, uh, this uh, consultant with, for Comau. And one of their requirements was to uh, 
they asked a lot of stuff, but one was uh, to develop a trajectory uh, planning with continuity up to the jerk. They provided us a lot of uh, constraints, much more than what we are going to see today, but they wanted continuities up to the jerk for mechanical reasons of their uh, motor and transmissions. Jerk is the derivative of the acceleration. I don't know if, uh, but it's not, it's uncommon to, to find the jerk in our uh, uh, master class. We want a regular curvature because a regular curvature implies also continuity in the uh, time loop. I'll give you an example. Uh, when, you, when you take a train, the bend of the train is designed so that it is, uh, uh, the curvature is continuous. You go from uh, uh, zero curvature to a certain curvature different from zero, and then you, you come back on a straight line and come back to the zero curvature. This one cannot be a circle of uh, uh, arc of a circle, because this would imply a discontinuity in a curvature, because a circle, circle, they do exhibit constant curvature, okay? In particular, in a civil engineer, they use so-called clotoid, are, uh, function that guarantee a continuous curvature. And this is done also uh, for uh, the highway, the, the, the um, input, the, I mean, the, 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 the bands to exit and uh, enter in the highway, they do have continuous curvature, even if with their car, I mean, you ideally you wouldn't need it because of course uh, with the, uh, with the car, you are following a continuous curvature because this continuity is physically not possible. But as well, they design with a continuous curvature in order to avoid the perception problem that you find would find in case. For robots, it's uh, it's the same. Okay, we need continuity in order to avoid the mechanical stress. Actually, for the train not only the mechanical stress, but even the traveler perceive this discontinuity as unpleasant. We will see the possibility to a point-to-point -point motion. Actually, we will focus our attention in point-to-point -point motion, but uh, I will just give you a overall idea of what to do in, ca in case I give you a sequence of points. For example, if I want to, if, if I have an automotive application and I need uh, uh, to solder the chassis of a car, I do have in a file all the 3D point where I do need to uh, locate my uh, saldatrices uh, to the uh, welding, sorry, welding, to, to make welding, and all the points where I need to stop and make welding. In that case, I need to exactly stop in order to make the welding. Okay. okay, so we are coming to some equations finally. Point to point motion means basically I want to go from initial to final position. Now, look, this is scalar because what we are going to see is simply scalar and we, we will easily uh, extend it for our joints when we are going to, to write the code. Now, I have infinite possibilities going from uh, one point to another. <clears throat> Even with the constraints of continuity, I have infinite possibilities. It means that, uh, okay, we can, uh, we can have fun and minimize something. Every time that uh, we have uh, infinite possibilities, uh, as engineer, we implement an optimization problem in order to minimize some matrix related to energy, for example, okay? 
And this is exactly what we do here. We implement an optimization problem, trying to minimize, uh, of course, uh, in a simplified uh, mode, trying to minimize the energy. We are not going to the details, but uh, what we want to minimize uh, is the square of the torque. And uh, it is known from uh, uh, calculus that the solution is a quadratic polynomial in the velocity, so a cubic in the position. And we will see just right now the phase of this solution. This is the phase. The solution is a cubic polynomial in time with four coefficients to be fined. Okay? Velocity and accelerations are the time derivative. And uh, I, I need to find four coefficients. Okay? Now, four coefficients in a polynomial, basically, I have uh, a constraint for the initial position, a constraint for the final position, a constraint, well, I can add uh, a constraint for the initial velocity and for the final velocity, for example. But I cannot add constraints on the acceleration. I only have a four coefficients. And I decide uh, to impose those four constraints. Look, T is assigned. It means that I have, a, I have uh, uh, four equations in four unknown is very easy and i can find a0 that is equal to i a1 that is equal to dot i and this relation for qf and q dot f from that i just make the the find the solution of of this uh, linear system of equations and i find my nice uh, time law let us discuss a little bit uh, this time law. Is it nice or not? So and so. It's not very nice. This is the solution of a mathematical problem. But from the engineering aspect, it's not very nice. And let us see why. The top plot is the position, Q. The middle plot is the velocity. And the bottom plot is the acceleration. For, for a specific case of uh, 0 pi, initial velocity zero final velocity zero total time one second okay so for a specific case why this is not very nice this is not very nice first of all i have a discontinuity in acceleration okay then uh, in the uh, initial and final time then my velocity is very strange and it's very counterintuitive if you want to go from a place to another, what we usually do, we accelerate, we, we travel at a constant velocity, and we decelerate. This is what we usually do. Here, I'm uh, continually, continuously increasing my velocity, reach the maximum velocity, and then decrease. Now, if my motors, they do have constraints on the maximum velocity, and the maximum acceleration, I'm uh, only using my maximum uh, mechanics only here at the center of the trajectory and beginning and end of the trajectory. It's not very, uh, it's not very nice from the engineering aspect, okay? Mathematically, this is what minimizes the energy. But uh, engineering, I don't like it. Also, I cannot assign the maximum acceleration. And this cannot be accepted because, of course, uh, uh, I do have uh, constraints on my physical machine. OK, if I want to add the initial fine acceleration, I can say, OK, I need the two more coefficients. So for example, a quintic order polynomial 
This is also only a mathematical solution, and uh, I will not go into the, uh, the, the, the draw of this one. Also, because when a polynomial increases its order, it also increases the number of local minimum. Okay, let me try a pragmatic way, an engineering way. The engineering way is this one, and it is what you are going to implement next Tuesday. I assign a trapezoidal, a trapezoidal velocity profile. What does it mean? It means that my velocity exhibits a trapezoidal profile, you know, the, 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 the geometric uh, um, curve. If you look at the position, this is the integral, if you look at the position, well, it's not very far from uh, this one, okay? So, it's a pragmatic solution. This pragmatic solution requires to uh, identify three phases. An initial phase with the constant acceleration, this is the acceleration, so linear velocity, a cruise phase at constant velocity, and the final at constant deceleration. Now, I can assign initial and final position, final time, and I can assign either the maximum acceleration or the maximum velocity. So I must pay attention because uh, one is uh, satisfied by construction, the other should be checked. If it's not satisfied, well, I have to slow down the trajectory, basically, because it means that I'm asking, I'm requiring too much to my, to my uh, system. Okay, so now, the way uh, I compute is, if I just put this in uh, some proper equation, I have some constraints uh, on the parameter of my uh, trapezoidal velocity profile. I'm not going into the details of those constraints. So you will implement that. But uh, let me just say that those constraints come from the fact that I need to impose continuity in the switching point. Okay. Okay. Uh, some equations. Uh, um, let me say that. Uh, uh, I don't want to go into the details. And then this is what I'm going to implement. If the acceleration is provided, first I have to check a physical constraint. Is the acceleration high enough for this displacement in this amount of time? Yes or no? If no, okay, abort from my program, because it means that uh, the, the user provide uh, um, constraints that are not physically achievable. Then I compute uh, a, the switch in time, and I implement my trajectory very easily in this way. Basically, when you are going to implement this, it will be really, really easy. In the sense that uh, your code need to check the time. If I'm uh, in the window between zero and this switching time that I already computed here, I implement this one. Init sorry, initial position plus alpha given acceleration multiplied current T squared. Okay, for all the, 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 the acceleration phase. This is the cruise phase and this is the, the deceleration phase. Very, very easy. This is just an example, a graphical example with some numbers by assigned six pi as maximum acceleration. As you can see, trapezoidal velocity profile. The other possibility is that assigned the cruise velocity. I always have uh, a physical check, physical consistency check. Then I may compute the switching time, the acceleration, 
and the trajectory those equations are exactly the same as the previous page okay no difference this is what you are going to do next tuesday the generation of a trapezoidal velocity profile that will be used in your uh, exercises and in your project in order to avoid the set point or the, the regulation problem uh, here I have a couple of pages uh, providing some MATLAB uh, details but I will uh, repeat them next Tuesday so let me just keep it today and here is just some line of code uh, that you are going to implement before uh, going to break, let me just uh, give you an idea of what I can do when I need to pass through a sequence of points, okay? Now, initial, final, and assign intermediate point, Q2 and, Q and Q3, okay? I need to interpolate all those points. Now, a knife solution mathematical solution is just to, to, to build a huge polynomial. And this is uh, unfeasible for several reasons. Uh, not going to, into those, you can read it, but it's very, it's very um, from the engineering aspect, has uh, a lot of drawbacks. So what we do is we build a sequence of polynomials that interpolate between two consecutive points and we can assign, for example, the velocity in all uh, the via point, the name is via point, or some other constraints, okay? And uh, here, I want only to show you the possibilities. In that case, for example, I have this four point here. This is the position. The velocity has been assigned and it is satisfied. There is a continuity in the velocity. The acceleration is not, and this is discontinued. Okay, this is one possibility. Another possibility here is with the zero velocity at each point. If I need to make a weld, I need to stop here, for example. And uh, other possibilities, uh, I only want to show you the, the plot. Other possibility is uh, to play with the with, uh, um, time law in order to for example if you look here sorry let me try to okay if i zoom here i do not uh, reach exactly the point but i'm close to the point this is named as via point this is another possibility to make the interpolation okay but as i said we are not going to the details and this is also difficult to, to check, but here I have two different uh, via point. None of the two exactly reach this point, but the difference is, uh, okay, you, you have to go really close to it or a certain distance to it, and it changes the curvature of the trajectory. Okay, so this was just to give you an idea of what we, we can do. We stop here, we make a break of, uh, of course, if you have any question, uh, feel free to, to ask and uh, stop the registration.